is the exact tendency that made me um, so big on YouTube. It's 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 a bit of irony. Yeah, there's always somebody who likes like what you have to say, if this, even if you're a nut job. But <laughs> I mean, you know, Bill O'Reilly has a following, so it's not necessarily the numbers makes you <laughs> is a vote for, of confidence. I I do kind of keep the uh, comment section um, civil in one way just by being um, extremely um, edgy with the people who make dumb dumb comments. People come out and, and make ad hominem attacks like and such. Um, it's kind of my way of, of, of dealing with uh, the internet bully mentality. You know, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of these trolls out there who attempt to, you know, make it personal to talk about your family or to, um, you know, s take you off the subject and get into that kind of thing. And um, I've kind of set a precedence of, uh, of embarrassing that kind of activity in public. So it keeps it, it keeps people like that where they're hesitant to say certain things. But the first video, it was, man, you know, I don't remember the exact date. It was right when the... Um, the health care the Obama health care bill law passed um, so it was within a week of that I think it was March 2010 no that, yeah that was Storm Clouds Gathering that's the first the first attempt and if anybody ever wants to go back all the way to the first video I've, I've left that video up there um, it's it's kind of comical it's um, it's very awkward um, you know I remember I, I bought a camera back in 2008 because I've been planning on doing this for a long time, and the the first few videos that I recorded myself were just so embarrassing that I just you know, I, I gave up for quite a while. It, it was March twenty eighth, two thousand ten. I just got the date on that, so March twenty eighth. Um, and the, you know that first video that I put out on, on March twenty eighth, two thousand um, ten. It um, it took me hours to record because it was just. I mean, I was so nervous. I couldn't, I couldn't um, get my words out clearly, and um, you know, it, it felt like I was in front of the crowd already. And then, then I get it up online, and it was like, it took like a week to get thirty views. <laughs> it's like, oh, and it's, I, you know, it's a real letdown. I didn't, re didn't realize just how long it takes to get to the point where people actually watch. Um, yeah, it's there's there's definitely a strategy, and once you learn the strategy, then it's fairly easy to, to to move up. Like, I've actually started a second channel, which I'm I haven't had a lot of time to put into, but it's it's grown at a an astronomical rate compared to the first one, even with just only three videos up. So, it, it definitely has a lot to do with the way that you pro approach it, and you learn that over time. Well, I had an agenda, but. And, and, and when I look back at the very, very first video, it is consistent with the very first video is, is a very good representation of what has become the central agenda. Uh, but, you know, it took me a while of going through the process of making these other videos because I just made videos on all the topics I was interested in in the beginning. Um, and before I was able to, to really get clear about what works, what doesn't work, the first video was basically a call for... Um, nonviolent resistance to the new health care bill, which is I'm, I'm, for people, I know a lot of people in Europe because I'm living in Europe right now a lot of people have a kind of a, a misinformed version of what happened with that bill well we didn't get a, a public health care option at, at all in fact, um, the Obama administration specifically pushed against it um, and instead instituted a bill that, that was um, basically makes it mandatory to have private health insurance. It gives you know, a, a, a monopoly, a controlled market to the, um, to the private health insurance companies, which, have, which were the source of the problem. Um, you know, we're basically, we have our entire health care system run by these, these, um, these, cartel, these insurance cartels, and now they're making it where not only are these cartels you know, running our lives and making it where, you know, they they can tell you no on any any kind of medical treatment whatsoever. They don't have any restrictions. They can do essentially what they want. And now we have to buy the health insurance. Um, so it's it's a, it's a big big power grab. And uh, and to me, you know, and they're using the tax system as the method of enforcement.
So they're going basically straight into people's checks. If you don't buy health insurance, they just take the money. Um, and that's pretty hardcore. If you realize, like, they're just taking money straight out of your check from using the government's taxation power and giving it straight to the, to the um, insurance companies. Um, but, you know, people aren't really up in arms in it yet because it's still not 2014 is when, when it actually starts. So we'll see what happens. I mean, there's been a lot of people who are, you know, who've made, um, who've put, brought this, these cases to the court. And it's, there's, there's a chance that it might not uh, stand. But um, if it does stand, it's going to, it's going to revolutionize. Um, it was gonna, it's going to be a major power grab because it also gives the government direct access to your finances at all times. What we're seeing right now is fascism, pure and simple. And when you when you have fascism, there's no rule of law. These companies, they make the the uh, they set up conditions that apply to the people they wanted to apply to, and then those who have enough money to to make it not apply, um, just you know, say, hey, Obama, remember I gave you that campaign contribution? Um, let us out of it. Um, so I mean, really, it's it's the the corruption is so rampant in the United States. It's it's most it's it's impossible for some people to fathom. It's just so blatant, and when you get to that point where um, it's so extreme, some people just really can't deal with it. They just say, "Well, that can't be true. That can't be real." But it is. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I've seen, you know, I've 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 run across some things that I don't even talk about because it's like you know you know you'd have to build up that background. People. And that's been a part of the learning process of making these videos is realizing just how much people can handle it at one given time and, and understanding that you know, something may be 100% true, factual, provable beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, a mathematical certainty, and people just can't see it if, it goes, if it's too much outside of the realm of their, um, their accepted belief system. I mean, there has to come this moment where there's a, a shattering of the fundamental structure in order to for the people to be open to the, to, to the next thing. Um, and that's what I guess a lot of people call waking up. Um, you know, and and it, it, that was a really hard thing for me to understand for a long time because my shattering process happened so when I was so young. Um, and I was suspicious from the age of 13. So uh, when you're suspicious of everything, when you're, you know, when, when you're sitting in church and you're listening to the preacher and you're going, what? No, come on, come on. No, this is not right. Um, if you don't do that when you're 13, by the time you get to, like, 30, you've already accepted this huge mass of bullshit. It's just you're, it's become the foundation of your world. Um, and so it's, it's like you have to, like, chip away at the root. That's that's the thing that's that requires some restraint um, if you really want to be effective. And that's what I've been trying to find the, the formula for is, you know, to basically – Avoid these major points of resistance, or hit them just slightly, you know, as the moment allows, and then erode underneath the foundation. I mean, I kind of think of it as a with the analogy of of a foundation. If you like, if you have a building that you know, say this building is um, unsound, it's going to come down, and but you're trying to, you know, but you have these people who are defending. The foundation. They're just sitting there, like, wait, no, no, you're not going to touch this. You know, if you came with a sledgehammer, they would take you, you know, basically, you know, throw you out. So basically, you have to send like these little drops of water, you know, underneath the foundation, you know, eroding out the, the the supports, eroding out the supports, eroding out the supports until one moment comes, and it may not be you that does it. It may not be something that you said that's the final breaking point. It could be someone else down the line. Because I know for a fact, for me, that was the case. A lot of people argued with me. And they saw absolutely no results. You know, they saw this hard-headed idiot walk away and go, ah, you know, he's never going to get it. And so I, I guess I kind of I, I try to apply the, the principles that worked on a hard-headed guy like me, which is just basically, you know, just the, the, the mass of, uh, of attacks from different directions eventually led to a shift. And, uh, man, he, he, obviously – we're not going to see a lot of what we want to see done in our lifetime. I mean, I would like to, but I think in order to be effective, you have to be operating from the standpoint of we have to do what we have to do. We have to fight to shift things uh, regardless of whether we see the results or not. Because, you know, 
the big changes are usually generations down the road. And, and that's hard 